In today's video, we're gonna talk about three secrets that I use to lose 50 pounds and keep it off for the last four years. Now, these three secrets, one about food, one about exercise, and one about keeping it off in the long run, are all things that are designed to make your life easier, which is super important when you're trying to lose weight and keep it off. Now, just to qualify myself, four years ago, I was about 50 pounds overweight on the beach. My kid came running up to me and he's like, dad, dad, can we play in the water? And I was like, nah, I'm too tired. And that kicked off for me a whole process of losing about 50 pounds over the course of a year, which I then kind of kept off. I had a massive, massive advantage when I went to lose the weight and found it a lot easier than most people normally do because I had a background in sports nutrition. You know, I'd been a professional soccer player for 10 years and I already understood the basics of kind of energy balance, macronutrition and micronutrition. And in today's video, you're gonna learn three secrets that I kind of knew then, but really refined in my head that made this process a whole lot easier. All right, we're gonna start in five seconds. Let's get into it. Okay, secret number one is you can eat carbs and lose weight. For the last 10 years, we had like the Atkins dominance, then low carb, then paleo, now keto. Everybody has been telling you that you can't eat carbs and lose weight. And this is just total nonsense. Like if you wanna go the higher carb route as opposed to the lower carb route, it is totally up to you and you may well even find it easier. And personally, you know, I lost the vast majority of that 50 pounds eating pretty high carb, you know. Oatmeal for breakfast, at dinner I'd always have carbs with my family and at lunch I often had like a sweet potato or some rice. So if you wanna eat higher carbs, that is totally up to you some of the longest lived societies on earth eat, you know, rice, um, oatmeal, sweet potatoes. It's totally fine. It's a healthy thing to do and it can actually help you lose weight if it's well set up. And I'm gonna talk about what well set up means in a second. So just don't believe the hype. And the reason I never believed the hype was because I fell for the low fat dogma way back in the 90s. So before I started playing professional football, I was at a, at a um, sports nutrition course in the Institute of Sport, I was about 17, and I went into this class, and the guy talked about the benefits of adding some fat to your diet for your hormones, like for testosterone, and for inflammation. And like, back in 1996, this was a revelation because people only ever talked about protein and carbohydrates. Protein, and, nobody mentioned fat, fat was demonized, you couldn't eat fat, it made you fat. And then after this kind of seminar ended, I was like mind blown. And we went to a restaurant with the team and I watched a guy pick the avocado out of his salad. And I was just, you know, dogma dies really, really hard. And lately, for the last 10 years, we have been in this kind of world of people telling you, you cannot eat carbs, carbs make you fat. And it is nonsense and I'm gonna prove it to you right now. So I'm gonna use three studies that you should not believe the hype. You wanna get out of this kind of carb, fat, carb, fat dogma and get into the world of kind of better nutrition. So high carbs can have some benefits. There is a meta study, a study of studies where they looked at 32 controlled studies where they matched protein and calories and then they checked what the results were. And when the actual people in metabolic wards give people the food and they match these studies, what they found is actually low fat slightly outperformed low carb. So it has a slight metabolic advantage. People kind of burn a little bit more energy over the long run on a low fat diet than they do on a low carb diet. So when people are actually giving you the food, there's a little bit of evidence to say that actually low fat might be slightly better. Now, this doesn't mean that you should eat a high carb, low fat diet. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it does disprove this idea that you can't lose weight eating a low fat diet, because you totally can. People used to do it all the time. Bodybuilders do it, athletes do it. It's totally possible. The interesting thing is these were controlled studies, so it doesn't tell us what works best in the real world, which I'm gonna talk about now. So that's the high carb benefit. For low carb, when you look at the um, kind of free living studies, what you tend to see is that at about the six month mark, low carb diet diets tend to do better than low fat diets. So the opposite, the low carb ones are outperforming. And what we see from this, what it kind of tells us is that low carb diets have a satiety benefit. They're a little bit better at keeping us full. So that's a real benefit to low carb diets. And you'll show, there's a graph here, I think it's 48 studies of kind of a whole bunch of diets. And what they showed was that about six months, the low carb diets were outperforming 
but by about 12 months it had come back together and it was pretty much a mixed bag. So low carb, the low carb benefit can be for a lot of people that it just really helps them keep full. So if that is you, then you can consider going low carb. Now finally, the last study, and I just wanna point out, I think this whole kind of carb fat paradigm just leads people up the wrong path, to be honest, because you can, you can, you know, you can go oatmeal and sweet potato or you can go avocado and eggs. It doesn't really matter. But what we saw in this really amazing study in the last year, this diet fit study, and they tested kind of a, a high quality, really um, nutritious low carb against a high quality, really nutritious um, low fat. And what they found was the results were almost exactly the same. And the key takeaway was regardless of what you do, you need to do something you can stick to and focus on having real quality food. And to be honest, if you really look at lots and lots of studies, you read hundreds of studies like I have, what you'll find is that it's about, these are just the wrong macros. We're focusing on fat and carbs when really the macros that you really wanna work on is eating more protein and eating more fiber. Because more protein and more fiber are known to have really strong satiety benefits and they are known to be correlated with long-term weight loss success. So you wanna get out of this kind of low carb, high carb dogma and you wanna think about eating more protein and more fiber. And if you wanna go high carb, if you wanna eat carbs like I do, because you know, if you're doing keto, you can't find your keys, um, you know, go for high carbs because you know, you might feel great, you might move around more, it might be a good fit for you. Alrighty, the second secret is you don't need exercise to lose weight. And this is really important to understand because people get this wrong all the time. They, they're like, oh, I need to lose some weight. I'm gonna start exercising like mad. And this is a total fail. Like this is, I call this the January fail because it's really not very scientific to go to exercise first when you could start with nutrition. And to give you a personal example, the year that I lost 50 pounds, I did something really weird. So I deliberately tried to limit my exercise to one hour per week. So basically I was just lifting weights for one hour per week because I really wanted to see if I could kind of lose a whole bunch of weight doing no exercise, just as an experiment. And you know, I managed that and I think towards the end it would have really helped if I could have added in some cardio. It would have made things um, a lot nicer. I wouldn't have had to eat as low in terms of uh, calories. but. It was totally possible and I want to explain to you why. So you know, I did a challenge with some clients in January for about 10 weeks and you know, people lost between kind of 25 pounds and, and five pounds. One of the guys that was doing it, John, um, I didn't really hear from him during the challenge but I think I heard from him once at five weeks and then I didn't hear at 10 and I thought, oh, he must have messed it up but I heard from him at 11 weeks and he, he emailed me at 11 weeks and said, I've lost 21 pounds and I was like, brilliant, he didn't want to email me because he was aiming for that 20, 20 pounds. And what he told me, you know, I always started pressing him, what'd you do, what'd you do, this, that, that, all these things, how did your plan look? And then I was like, the nutrition was bang on. And then I asked him about his exercise, you know, what did you do for steps, what did you do for strength, and what did you do for cardio? So that's the order of operations I have in our program. So first you just try and take more steps, then you start thinking about strength training, and then you add cardio. And he was like, um, uh, I haven't done any of that. I'm gonna sort it out next challenge. <laughs> and I was like, that's just brilliant. So, and he has proceeded to start doing more exercise, which is great. But the thing that people get wrong is they fall into, I call this the cardio trap. So I'm gonna throw up a graph now. This is the Google trend for cardio over the a space of a year. And what you'll see there is every January, everyone's Googling cardio, right? People think cardio equals weight loss. Cardio for weight loss is a great idea. Actually, you know, science doesn't say that. What happens when you do cardio is your body reacts in two ways. You get hungry, like glycogen goes down and it creates a hunger response. So it makes you want to eat more food and you tend to move around in the rest of the day. So when they measure your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, people just don't move as much. And what happens is people often do a bunch of cardio, don't lose any weight. They, you know, marathon training, haven't lost any weight. And there is a study to really hammer this home where they took a bunch of women for six months and they gave them zero, one, two, or three hours of cardio, steady state cardio a week, 50, 60% of heart rate. And at the end of six months, there was no statistical difference in terms of weight loss. And although it wasn't statistically different, the group that had lost the most weight and the most fat were the control group that had done zero cardio. So 24, that's, there was a group that had done 72 hours of cardio and a group that had done zero. And the group that did zero 
had lost more weight than the women who had done 72 hours of cardio. So what I am saying here is, if you want to lose weight, do not start with cardio or strength training or, or even walking. Start with your nutrition because it is so much more efficient. It is so much easier to just sort your food out and start losing weight than it is to start adding exercise. So that's what I call the cardio trap. Now, I, what I'm, I, you know, I used to be a professional footballer. I know that exercise is a wonder drug for your health. So I'm not trying to you know, tell you not to exercise, but I just want you to get the order of operations right. You need to get your deficit going with your nutrition. And then this is what, why you should exercise. So taking more steps, doing lots and lots of steps, we know it is incredible for keeping weight off in the long run. So more activity is amazing for keeping weight off. And in the National Weight Loss Registry in America, the dominant form of exercise that people do, of all these people lost tons of weight, is they just walk more blocks. Strength training is absolutely incredible for making you stronger and for keeping muscle mass on your body and for protecting your metabolic rate a little bit. So, you know, you should do some strength training to try and keep some muscle mass. If you've got any physique, physical goals about looking better, really do some strength training. And then last, cardio. Because of this kind of recent science about cardio, people throw cardio out. Don't do cardio, it's a stupid idea, yeah? Cardio is like a wonder drug for your heart and lungs, yeah? The single probably best predictor of longevity in terms of exercise is your ability to kind of maintain cardiovascular output. So people who have good cardiovascular health, who are fit, are much, much less likely to die. So you should do cardio for your health, but if you wanna lose weight, you need to sort out your nutrition. And that is why I'm saying you don't need exercise. And when I'm working with my people, we start with nutrition, and then once we get the ball moving, we can add exercise down the line. Okay, so our last big secret is you can keep it off. If you're ever lucky enough to lose a whole bunch of weight, you will notice kind of as you get leaner that people start saying the craziest stuff to you. They'll start saying stuff like, you're getting way too thin, and or, or you'll just gain the weight back. And mostly I think this is people just kind of mirroring kind of feeling bad about their own situation it's not ill intended but it's also just wrong so it is not true that 95 percent of people gain the weight back and i've looked up a paper that actually has some real data as opposed to some myth and what you'll find is about kind of 37 percent a third of americans who lose weight are able to keep five percent of their body weight off and if you lose five percent of your body weight and keep it off there are profound health benefits to be had about 17 percent for about a fifth of people are able to keep 10 percent off and about 8%, so about a tenth of people, 12th of people are able to keep 15% of their body weight off, which is a massive amount of weight. You're talking on, in that group, it's like an average of 30, 40 pounds. And I think something that people get really, really wrong when they're, they're thinking about losing weight is they think that it's something that just happens. I'm just gonna go in for 10 weeks, 10 week challenge like we did. And then, you know, I'll do that. I'll lose the weight and then it'll be done. It'll be over. And that is simply not how it works. And I think a lot of this kind of myth is derived from this old kind of 500 calorie rule or the 3,500 calorie rule, which basically people think that if you cut 500 calories a day for seven days a week, that's a 3,500 calorie kind of deficit. That's how much um, energy stored in a pound of fat. So, you know, you just have to, if you want to lose, 20 pounds of fat, that's 20 weeks at 500 calories a day, or 10 weeks at 1,000 calories a day. And that's just wrong. It's the wrong way to think about it. And the original paper written in 58 by Max Wolofsky, it never even said that. It's just a myth. So basically, he was just saying that this is the amount of energy stored in body fat, and if everything was perfect, you know, you'd lose a pound a week. But actually, he wrote in the paper that your body adapts and it changes. And the true rule you should understand is the 10 calorie rule. So if I, in my situation, 3000 calories uh, a day, probably weighing about 230 pounds, if I was to lose a pound a week, drop to 2500 calories, lose a pound a week, after four years, my body would be non-existent. So obviously that rule is nuts, right? It doesn't make any sense in the long run. Adjustments must happen, your body learns to survive on fewer calories. And to be honest, if you want to go to a lighter weight and stay at that weight, you're either going to have to eat fewer calories in perpetuity or you're going to have to exercise more, which is what the 10 calorie rule tells us. So better science, when they really looked at this, they say that a good approximation is if you want to lose 30 pounds, 
then you need to, over the lifetime, you need to, to lose that 30 million, make a 10 calorie per pound adjustment to your energy balance. So to basically, you, if you're just gonna do it with diet, you need to perpetually eat 300 calories less per day forever to keep that weight off, or you need to do the equivalent amount of exercise which raises your activity to cover that energy gap. So that's the 10 calorie rule. And it is a very, very clever rule because what it tells you is that you need to strap in. You need to make some permanent changes. And if we look at the best database of people who've lost weight around the world, there in America, there's something called the National Weight Loss Registry. And if you really look at all the studies of them, what you'll find is that they, they are a phenomenal group of people, by the way. It's like 10,000 people. The average weight loss is like over 33 kilos. So like 70 pounds, kept it off for five years. So these are the real biggest losers, the people who are amazing and losing weight. And unlike the actual biggest loser of the show, what these people have done has made permanent changes to their lifestyle, both in terms of nutrition and exercise. They made permanent changes and that is what helped them keep the weight off. And just for a few examples, I'll show you basically the most common diet is that it is a little bit of an old database. So the common, most common dietary approach in that group is actually low fat, low fat diet, low fat, low calorie diet. And they've stuck with that diet and they actually don't eat, surprisingly don't eat that many calories. I think it's like 1700 for men and 1400 for women in the study. That's what they report. They all eat breakfast, they all do lots of exercise. The most common exercise is just walking blocks. We're talking like an hour of exercise a day. And they regularly weigh themselves. So basically, they have made weight loss a lifestyle change. They've made a whole bunch of permanent changes. And if you want to lose weight and keep it off, this is absolutely the way you should be thinking about it. You know, you should be thinking about permanent changes, which, you know, disqualifies a lot of approaches. So for me, the idea of permanently going on a ketogenic diet is total nonsense, right? Because I eat carbs every night with my family. I like to have carbs in the breakfast, other, you know, otherwise I, I, I can't think straight. So, you know, keto or low carb is just a bad fit for me. That's why I eat more carbohydrates. I've got clients where it's the opposite. They feel great on a low carb diet. Their energy is good, their concentration is good. So they do a low carb diet. And then as over time, once we've got the nutrition sorted, we start to add the exercise because you know that exercise is bad for losing weight, but it's incredible for keeping weight off. So this is absolutely the key. You can keep it off, but you need to invest your energy in permanent change because that is where all the magic is. Okay, so I hope you really enjoyed our three secrets. Given that you are still here, I thought I should ask you a question. So would you like some help with this? You know, do you like this kind of using science to lose weight idea? This idea of just finding a smarter way to lose weight. Because if you do, I run a kind of really clever and cheap weight loss coaching program that's based on the idea of creating permanent change. And it's called weekday weight loss. And the idea is that you go in, get your deficit sorted during the week, and then chill out at the weekend. Because it's the easiest way to sustain a deficit and really set yourself up with some habits for long-term weight loss. If you are interested, I run a monthly, we're doing a monthly challenges which just go on and basically it's a really cheap membership program. You get four things. So you will get access to our website which is the weekday weight loss system. It's a very kind of clever way to set up this idea of nailing your weekday nutrition. Next up, you will be getting support. So every week inside our private Facebook group, I do a video which goes through a subject and then I do kind of Q&A for clients. There's a, there's a small section of recipes which we're gonna kind of grow out as each of our monthly challenges go on. And then lastly, and this is something that we've added. So in, in January, I did a 10 week challenge which is kind of short and focused, but now we're moving into this kind of permanent model and each month we're gonna do like a little challenge that has something a bit fun about it. So we've got a magazine, we're gonna cover a subject each month, there'll be a focus and everyone is just kind of gonna follow along and they're gonna learn a little bit which can help to make this whole process easier. So if you're interested in that, the, the, the model I used to run back in January, we tested it, you know, people did really well. Some people did great. Some people didn't do as well, but it was a really interesting kind of 10 week program of weekday weight loss. And what we had then was I had two prices. I had a coaching price at like 197 American and just the challenge for 97. But what I realized is I really want people to stick around in the long run 
and I want people to get great value. So what we've done is we've switched it to a really cheap monthly price, $19 per month. And basically what this allows people to do is just jump in and give it a try. And if it doesn't work out for them, they can just quit after a month or two and it's only costing them like the cup of, price of a cup of coffee a week. But if they get great value and they're losing a bunch of weight, like a good kind of about half of people in our group are doing pretty well, like those, you can just stay with us and you know, you'll get really great value. You get access to the magazine, a video each week as the website grows and you'll be part of a community. So we're basically, I think most, the biggest group is people from the UK and then America, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. A bit of an English language bias, but you know, that's just me. So if you're interested, check out, there'll be a link below and you can come and join us and get cracking with some permanent weight loss in the weekday weight loss group. Um, thanks so much, I really hope you like the secrets. That science is really solid, so do think about doing something permanent rather than jumping for these quick fixes.